Hello, and welcome to The Libationist, the YouTube channel that covers libations of all types, from cocktails to home brewing and beyond. So, today we're going over the three levels of cocktail, teaching you to make a certain type of cocktail from the very basics up to the advanced and elevated. The cocktail that we're going to be examining today is the Mai Tai. It's one of my, you know, all-time favorite cocktails. It's the quintessential tiki drink, which is, I mean, that's a, just a genre that I absolutely love in terms of cocktail drinks. So, you know, it dates back to the, you know, 30s and 40s, became super popular during the mid-20th century tiki craze, and it's still one of the all-time classic cocktails of today. So, we're going to be going from teaching you how to make it with the minimum resources at hand, to the more traditional recipes, to looking at how we can elevate this. So, to start off, we're going to take a look with level one. Oh yeah, you know what time it is. Alright, so, level one cocktails, right? So level one Mai Tai, let me show you how we do it. So, first, we're going to start, and take a little shot glass here. We're going to start with the sugar, right? You know, level one, you don't use simple syrup or anything like that, because that is too complicated. So, just going to use some plain sugar. Just going to scoop that in there, call it good. The lemon juice. About half of this. All right, and then we're going to take this cruzon. Just want some plain almond milk, right? Nothing special. No sweetened, no flavors, just nice and basic. And then we're going to dry shake that. So we got a full cup here. What we're going to do is we're going to slip the cup. Half and half, half of that and the ice in there. And then we're gonna shake it up. All right, while we wait for that, we're gonna crack the ice and what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it out. And we're gonna take these little bits and just. All right, once you got it broken up, it's gonna take this. And we're going to strain it into our glass. Fuck for a try here, huh? Yeah, kind of like a little uh, creamy to it. Like the almond milk has a little something to it. We got that sourness, a little bit of citrusy notes to it from the lime and the orange. Yeah, I mean, you definitely tell what it's there, right? I mean, hell, is there what you want? This is closer to an actual Mai Tai than, you know, half the stuff that calls itself a Mai Tai. So, yeah. Level one. Let's see what level two's got. Okay, so level one done and over with. Let's see what we can do for level two. So, Mai Tai's an interesting cocktail because, uh, you know, the recipes are... I mean, all recipes for most cocktails have a little bit of flux in them, right? But my tais uh, have actually quite a bit. You know, I've read the recipes from a few online sources as well as a few cocktail making books, and the recipes almost always vary a little bit. But the core idea remains more or less the same. Uh, yeah, because especially also on top of that, my tais aren't the most unfortunately bastardized cocktails out there. You have my Thai recipes I've seen that call for pineapple juice, guava syrup, um, passion fruit, just a whole variety of different things that just, they, I mean, they can make great cocktails, but those are not Mai Tais. So, the traditional Mai Tai, right, the actual real Mai Tai, involves generally three pretty basic ingredients. You got lime juice, rums, in this case we're gonna be using a rum blend, that's often something included in it. Some curacao and orgeo. That's the other very important ingredient. So, put this together. We are going to first add our orgeo. Usually, like I said, I do stickiest to least sticky. So, this orgeo. Here we're going to be using Lieber and Co. There's a couple other orgeos that I know, uh, companies that produce it. Um, Small Hands Food also produces a good orgeo, but. 
uh, I found Libra Co. to be the one that has the one that's most consistently in stock, so they tend to be the ones I go with. Next, we're going to be going with one ounce of fresh lime juice. Just quarter these. Stick them in here. And to have two of these quarters should be enough to produce the ounce that we need. But right, yep, one ounce, good enough. So one ounce of lime juice. We're gonna do. 50-50 of some plantation five year. Kind of what you need for this is just a um, lightly aged, sort of more neutral rum. Some recipes can call for white rum for this, which I think uh, makes some sense. You know, so a fairly neutral rum depends on how much flavor it is. But I think uh, adding something with a little bit more age to it uh, definitely um, benefits. And for the second half, we're going to be putting some Appleton Estate in there. Signature, it's uh, perfectly functional for that purpose. Adds a little bit of uh, interesting flavor to it. And we're gonna be adding half an ounce of Curacao. In this case, we're using Grand Marnier. Adds a little bit more sugar and uh, some of the oranginess to it. So, now we have all that. We just need to add some ice and shake. So with bartending is you want one hole, one cracked. Just gonna shake that. And we're gonna fill this with cracked ice here. So you can do this uh, a few ways and get an actual proper pellet ice mold, uh, which I think level three has something about that. But for this, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna a cube, crack it up into little bits here. Pop that. Pour it out. I'm gonna and there's a couple ideas of how exactly you want to garnish it, right? Yeah, sometimes you want like a little floating island of a lime peel that you've soaked with bitters or. Um, uh, the float is also another important part, but I personally don't like a float on my Mai Tais. Um, it's just been necessary to me, right? I feel like I'm wanting the flavor of a Mai Tai instead of get smacked in the face with some overproof rum. It's, uh, yeah, a bit much for me. So what we're gonna do for my little style of garnish here, I'm gonna take one of these limes, I'm gonna slice a little wheel off of it. You know, you can use a, a half lime, but that seems excessive to me, right? Like, are you gonna eat an entire half a lime? No, I don't think so. But you know, sometimes you just bite into a little bit of a, a lime wheel at the end there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to a little bit of Angostura along the top there. And then we're going to get some cherries and pineapple. And then we're gonna skewer that through the lime. Just get a little stack there. And then we're going to just rest that up top. All right, and that is my level two Mai Tai. Mmm, God, Mai Tais are just delicious, man. It's a mix of flavors, like a citrusy mix. Cause you got the lime juice, you got the orange. Orange and lime is just a wonderful combination. You can understand why you see it so much throughout, you know, different sodas and cocktails. It's very popular. Man, Orgeau is so niche, right? Because like, there's not really too many of the very popular cocktails that use it. It's really just my time. It's a shame because it's, it's just so interesting. I mean, describe it, you know, it's almond, right? It's a taste of sweet almond, a uh, bit of like marzipan notes you know, because you get that like kind of extract flavors. Oh, that's excellent. So. That's my level two. We'll have to see what level three comes up with. So that there was level two. Kind of teaches you the more traditional way to make it. Uh, and we're gonna see here at level three how we want to elevate things. So when it comes to elevating the Mai Tai, I think we have two general approaches that we can take for 
fill it in. Because lime juice, lime juice is lime juice, right? There's not too much you can do for it. But with regards to the rum blend, right? If you saw level two, he's, you know, adding a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If you ask me, it's a lot of work when you're trying to put together a cocktail. And you got, you know, all these different rums that you're kind of adding, all these different liquors. So my idea is we're going to start with just making uh, just a plain blend, a single container that includes all the rums and all the proportions that we want it. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to be working with this base of Plantation 5 here. We're going to be adding two parts of that with some of this gunpowder proof uh, naval rum adds a lot of the molasses you notes that you kind of want to it adds a kind of a darker flavor to it and then we're going to be going with some funk to this Appleton Estate 8 year that I just broke the cap of so on top of that you're not going to be forgetting about the curacao and what I'm thinking that is we could add a fancy curacao of course but I'm thinking it adds sweetness and it adds oranginess I think a more interesting approach to take to that is just infusing those citrusy flavors straight into the blend itself. So what I think we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking some blood oranges, the peels of them, and infusing that within the rum blend. And then we're going to be infusing some of this pomelo, which, uh, if you don't know, it's an old ancestor of the grapefruit. It's a big fruit. But it's uh, often used for preserves and jams in Latin America, so I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this goes. So we're going to start with our plantation here, putting in a cup of plantation. And if you want to create a bigger batch or a smaller batch, you can of course always adjust these amounts that you're putting in. The important thing is that it's two parts, so it's half of this plantation rum. You have a nice, lightly aged golden rum. And then one part each of the uh, black rum, the molasses rum, and the Jamaican rum. So I'm going to be putting a half cup, and actually might be all of this, of this navel rum here. And up from like one drink here. And this Jamaican rum, which the cap's broken, so we're going to do this pirate style. Okay. There we go. Hmm, that's good. All right, so there we have our rum blend. And a little bit of the citrusy nuts. So what we're gonna go with is, we're gonna go with two blood oranges and about half of this pomelo. And now we're gonna work on for pomelo here. I think about half of it will do. But adjust it as you think you might want your Mai Tai to go with. Well, look at the size of this peel. Seal that up, let it infuse. Well, easy to use to. I think a few hours should be fine, but if you want to put it in there for a few days, I think there's nothing wrong with that, right? Infuse it as long as you want it to. All right. And with that done, we're going to move on now to the Orgeau. All right, so while that rum blend sits and infuses, we're going to put together our own Orgeau here. So, to do this, what we're going to want is we're going to want to look at first how we want to elevate the orgeau itself. Because you can make just plain orgeau. Um, there are recipes online that you can do to follow that. But when it comes to third level, I think there's more that we can do. We can do more than just plain almond orgeau. And how to elevate that? Well, uh, you, know, you could heavily roast the almonds. Uh, you can incorporate certain other flavors, but I think the one that I find the most interesting is incorporating other nut varieties into the orgeau. I remember at a cocktail bar a few months back, there was something on the menu that incorporated 
pistachios. They made a pistachio orgio. And that was very interesting. I, I thought that was a very, a very unique take on how to elevate the Mai Tai. So to do this, what we're gonna want is we're going to, of course, have our almonds here. Uh, ignore the bag quality. We're gonna be putting in half a cup of these almond slivers into our bowl in here, because we want a very finely uh, so we're going to incorporate two other nut varieties, which I think will do quite nicely for this. What we're going to have is first macadamia. It's a very fatty variety, which I think you know, slightly kind of just inherently goes well with sugar. So it's very buttery flavor nut. So we're going to do a quarter cup. And then we're going to have another quarter cup of walnuts. How do you walnuts? Kind of waxy, but very... heavy as well. Have a bit of those, I mean, you know my favorite word, basier notes. But I think those will go well into it. So we're going to take this, uh, blend it up, and turn it into a very fine powder and then we're going to continue the rest of the way here. All right, to start our orgeau, we're gonna start by adding three quarters of a cup of water to the mix. Heat. And once that's warm, we're going to be adding Three quarters of a cup of sugar. Make a uh, little batch of simple here. It's a little bit of a wider simple. We're not doing the uh, two to one ratio that you would typically use. We're just doing a one to one ratio. Because uh, I can assure you the um, nut powder is going to be adding more than enough consistency to the blend here. So now that the gum arabic has been completely infused, what we're going to do is we're going to add our nut mixture. I'm going to stir that in. It's all completely incorporated here. All right, so we're going to strain out the uh, orgeau here using a fine mesh strainer. Place it over our little container here. And it's gonna be, you still want it a little bit warm from the stove top because that way it makes sure that it is nice and liquid and easy to pour. Okay, and now that's done. We have our fully strained uh, orgeau. And our next step, what we want to do is add a little bit of orange flower water. You know, this is very intense in flavor. It doesn't smell that strong. Like, it smells kind of florally. It's like, okay, that's fine. But it, trust me, a little bit goes a long way. So for this, we're going to add just a quarter teaspoon. There we go, just a few drops there. A little goes a long way with that. So that's going to be added to the orgio. And the that should do it. And now we're going to take out the uh, citrus from our blend and we're going to put together our third level Mai Tai. Okay, so that's done. We now have our fully infused Mai Tai blend. It smells good. We have our macadamia walnut orgeau and limes. So we're gonna start off, you know, as we do. Sticky, sticky, sticky. And in this case, we're just gonna do a one, one, two ratio. Very basic, right? Keep it very simple. We're do one ounce of our special orgeo. Do an ounce of the lime. We're gonna fill it up. One ounce of the lime. We're gonna do two ounces of our blend. Then we're gonna shake that. All right, so when it comes to ice, 
uh, you know, level two did the half crack, half full. That's actually probably the best way to do it, honestly. But for me, I like to get one of these, add these larger cubes in the fridge. So what I typically like to do when I make my most night cocktails, so I usually just try to do my best to split it in half. Look at that. Get the larger piece in the cube. And then you see I have a whole bunch of smaller pieces here. I came off that, and I'm gonna turn these into the crushed bits. That's crack, crack, crack. So you kind of get the same agitation uh, and dilution, but just kind of all in, all in one. So, all right, just gonna shake this up here. All right, and then we're gonna strain that into our glass. All right, you can see here we got our frozen glass with pebble ice in it. So we use a proper full on mold because that way we get nice consistent pieces. I'm gonna strain that. Ooh, that's such an interesting color. All right, and then we're going to garnish that. Use some of the citrus that we used to infuse. So we're gonna take one of these peeled uh, oranges here. Take a strip of the pomelo fruit. We're gonna pick through it. And then we're pick through that. And there we go. And that is our level three Mai Tai. Okay, so let's give this a try. Okay, that's very interesting. So full disclosure actually, although I've tried variations of this recipe leading up to this, this is the first time I've had this cocktail with this exact specific set of variables, like specifically including the addition of macadamias, the pomelos, um, uh, like the broad idea was there, but this is the first time I've tried it exactly in this form. And the citrusy notes are kind of a lot lower down, right? It's like I was talking about the blood orange, how it's got that kind of like red wine notes. Maybe like the white wine notes of like an old normal orange, and especially like an orange liqueur, like Grand Marnier. Like this just tastes a lot heavier, a lot richer than that. To some degree, I do wonder how much the pomelo is actually adding. I can't pick it out, but also like, it's just so subtle, right? I feel like you could do this recipe and get more or less this value the addition of the vanilla, but I mean, who knows, right? Like I, again, it's the first time I've actually used that addition of it. So maybe it's vital, maybe it's vital to the flavors, but, but I think the alternate or Joe, I think that's really what brings this to the table. I think that's really what elevates this because You know, the Mai Tai is always a nutty drink. It always has orgeo as a big ingredient, but the use of other nuts definitely, it, it brings that out. Well, not like it doesn't take it away. It's not like a, like a, you know, some sort of like peanutty drink, like screwball whiskey or something. It's definitely subtle, but oh man, I love that. So there's my third level Mai Tai. All right, and there we are, the libationist three level of Mai Tais, from the very basics all the way to the elevated versions. So, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe if you wanna see what's coming next and hit the bell button too, because that's actually what will make sure that you see what's coming next. And uh, if there's something else, come on, what do YouTubers say? Like and subscribe and leave a comment. Yes, leave a comment. Actually, if you try these recipes, um, let me know, because actually I do like to hear some feedback on that one. So. Yeah, that's everything. Have a good one.